What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Yeah, back on the box with again. Um, tail stock has all been acetoned up and cleaned up and it's ready for painting. I've masked it up and everything else. Um, but I'm getting through paintbrushes at a fair old rate because they don't seem to recover after using this paint. <laughs> so we're going to get a few other bits and pieces ready and I'll just paint them all in one job lot. We can get the cabinet shifted as well and start slinging stuff back on it which would be quite nice. Um, the ways, I've scrubbed them, um, they've been de-rusted with that evapor rust stuff, which is really, really good actually. I did it with t-shirts and stuff in the end, much better than using paper towel. Um, and then it's had three in one all chucked over it and just gone over it again with a scotch bright just to take the smell off. There is a little bit of discoloration, don't really care. And if you run your finger along it, there are a few little pits and stuff. I think this is where the... Yeah, it could have been where the rust got to it. I don't really know. Um, but there are some tiny, tiny, tiny little pits and we've got some damage up here where I think the chuck was dropped on it. I'm not sure, it could be. It's in the right place, but I don't know. Um, I've also uncovered a serial number. It says AUD12034, which I'm gonna have a look at and see what year it came out of. It's the only number I can find. It's on the right hand end of the, the ways on the rail up the top here. I can't see any numbers anywhere else, not on the casting around the back or any of that lot. So I'm assuming that's a serial number, but we'll check, I'll let you know. Um, I was having a chat with the boys saying, is it gonna be worth getting this skimmed? You know, get it milled down so I can get rid of this pitting and stuff just because I want it to run as true as I possibly can do. Because um, I, I want to have a go on it, basically. And they said, well, yeah, you could do that, or you could just stick it back together again and have a go and see what it's like. So I'm doing that. <laughs> if we have to, we have to. Um, and ultimately, I do want to be able to do precision stuff on this as well. So it will probably happen at some point, which probably means the old lot's coming apart again, which ain't a problem. I have a cunning plan for that. Um, so next job, what I'm going to do is have a go at the uh, motor mount. The, the main motor bolts onto this, and then you've, you've obviously got the, um, the pulley wheels that go up with the, you know, the speed, speed, uh, speed belts and stuff on these different pulleys. There's another one that sits up here. This is the only damage that we've got. I'll see if I can show you. Look at that. Can you see that? I'm sure you can see that. I'll get a picture if not. Um, there's a dirty great chunk missing out of this. So I am gonna need to get another pulley. For now, it's easy, it's an easy swap. It's just held in with like a couple of grub screws. There's, there's a grub screw in there and that's basically it. It just goes onto the shaft. It is keyed. That's it, jobs are good. Um, I am gonna get another one, but for now, I'm just gonna stay off that groove. I ain't gonna use it. But I am gonna use it once it's done. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I get another one, it's just a simple swap out and away we go. I've got the full range of speeds. Um, but this is all coming apart. We're going to get it cleaned and sort of just check everything. The bearings actually run really, really well. Um, and I think they're pressed on this, in which case they ain't going to be coming off just yet. That'll be a job for another day when I can find some bearings for it. Um, but for now, I just want to get it all cleaned up and greased up and working so I can have a go. <laughs> right, let's pull this apart.
Right, so we've got loads of bits and pieces shop blasted ready for painting. Um, and I've also been cleaning up all the nuts and bolts and stuff. So these have gone through the ultrasonic bath with the vapor rust in. Coming up lovely, I'm just brightening them up a little bit on the the uh, scotch bite wheel just to get rid of the layer that um, you sometimes get with that stuff it seems. Oh, come on. Why can I never open this stuff? Um, this is just lay flat tubing. Uh, heat sealer. And literally anything that I'm cleaning up, I'll well, see right on here first. Ways bolts. Everything that I'm taking off all these different assemblies, I just want to make sure it all goes back in the same place. So it's all getting bagged up. Chuck it in here, throw some oil in it, because that never hurts. Um, where is it? That one will do. Then I can just forget about them until it's time to stick them back on. And that way I've got all the bolts in one place. They're all oiled up so they ain't going to get any worse. And we is all good to go. I'll stick that with the rest of them. Right. Um, pom 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 pom. I want to have a crack at that really. Because then I can paint everything all at the same time. Alright, let's get them out of the way. Oh, bloody typical. <laughs> Oh, that's barely done up. Ideally, I want to pull this all apart, give it a damn good clean, repaint the bits that need painting. I want to paint this too. Just because I think it will look nice, and obviously the um, the bearing brackets and stuff. But if they're all pressed in, um, that's going to be interesting because I haven't got a press. Um, Oh, and you're going to be a knob as well, aren't you? Um, mm. So it's just the one grub screw. It is keyed. How am I going to get that off? Right, checking with the book of words, these are pressed on. I ain't got access to a press, which is a little bit of a problem. However, it 
There's not a lot wrong with them bearings. <laughs> they do move nicely. Um, so I really wanted to have this shaft and everything else apart, shove it all through the parts washer. You know, get everything clean, basically. And I was going to paint this middle shaft. Um, well, I don't know why the insides and the cone is painted on it, but that was going to get a lick of paint as well. Paint the inside of the shaft between the centers and stuff, just to smarten it up, basically. Um, I don't know, until I can get access to a press, I ain't going to be able to get this apart. I, don't, I tried warming the, um, the pulley up just to see if that would help get it loose. It ain't. It's on there. <laughs> so really this needs pressing off and, and you know doing straight and nice rather than knocking it with a hammer. I tried tapping it very lightly with like I've got the lightest little hammer here. Just real gentle taps to see if that would help shift it but it didn't do anything. So. I think, I think what I'm going to do is clean it up as best I can. They're going to need to get pressed off at some point anyway because I need to replace this pulley because of the damage here. And when I get access to a press, um, I'll probably end up taking it into work and doing it there actually. Um, but for now I'm just going to clean it up as best I can and it will go back on as is. Um, and then when I when I can get it all pressed apart, I will probably swap out the bearings anyway. It doesn't sound anything wrong with them. They move lovely and free, as you've just seen. You know, but it's a bearing and this machine sat right next to a machine that used to do woodworking. So you get all this, you know, it's all this stuff that's jammed in there. Um, I'm gonna clean it all out, but ultimately I wanna swap the bearings out of this just to be on the safe side. Um, but for now, it will get what I can give it and it will have to be happy with that. <laughs> right, I think we're in. I've um, just been going over these pulleys with a scotch bright and some of the, the evaporous fluid out of the um, ultrasonic bath. Literally all I'm doing is um, giving them a clean up just to make sure there's no burrs or anything else on there that's going to nick belts and you know cause troubles and all that sort of stuff. So um, I think we're all right. I think we're in. They've come up pretty good actually. I don't know if you can see that. It was just crustiness on it basically. Let's give it a clean. And I'm not saying it looks like new because it don't. It looks a damn sight better than it used to. <laughs> Oh, there was loads of people chipped in about serial numbers. Because I, I could find a number on the inside of the um, inside of the gear cover, you know, the, the change wheel cover. Um, that ain't the serial number. The serial number's on the end here, as I said earlier on. So I went grubbing about on the lays.co.uk website and I found my serial number. Yeah, I got the dates horribly, horribly wrong. <laughs> It's in from the 70s as well. Um, this lathe was actually manufactured sometime between January 1963 and January 1964. <laughs> it's older than I thought. Don't mind a little bit of damage when it's that old. It's older than I am. <laughs> I do like all these little plates and stuff that it's got all over it, showing you the spindle speeds and all that sort of stuff, and obviously the the branding at the top, the only trouble is they look horrible. If you can look at this, I mean, it's you know, it's just showing its age basically, and where it's been repainted and all that kind of stuff, they haven't been too careful with the paint. <laughs> it would be nice to get these back. I'm not sure they are very, very, very slightly embossed, but I think if I was to paint it and then wipe it over some emery cloth on a flat surface, I'm just going to wipe all this off as well. Um, the other thing is it's held in with these these little pin, I think they're pin rivets, it's like, um, I'm not even sure pin rivets is the right name, but there's no slot on top, you can't get a screwdriver on them or anything else, 
But I think the thread on this isn't like a normal like screw thread. I think it looks a bit more like a, like a drill bit, if that makes sense. And you knock them in and they sort of tap their way in. Um, if anybody's got any experience of getting these things out, or if that's what they really are, um, if you could drop a comment, that would be really, really helpful. Um, what I don't really want to do is end up drilling them out and all that sort of stuff. I'd rather try and take them out as one. And I think it would just be a case of put a slot in it with a Dremel or a hacksaw and then wind them out with a screwdriver. But I'm not sure if that would work. And they are tiny. They're like, I don't know, four mil across, across the heads. So there's not a lot to play with. But if anybody's got any experience with these things, do drop a comment and let me know. Because I really want to keep these or freshen them up or just get new ones to, to stick on it and make it look cool. Um, but I don't just want to get rid of them and I would rather not have them nasty because everything else is going to get painted and look lovely. So it would be nice to you know, do them as well. Right. Right, I've painted a few bits and bobs. I did forget to paint this one. <laughs> Just the support for the end of the lead screw. Never mind, I'm gonna have loads more to paint anyway. They are gonna need another coat, and you can still see primer and stuff through it. So I've just made sure I've got into all the little nadgery bits and all that sort of stuff. We'll have a go at them again. Get them finished up and they can cure over the next couple of days. Right. Um, this is the clamp that goes on underneath the tailstock and it's made of wood. So I'm going to make another one out of steel, which should be easy enough. We'll just do it on the milling machine, eh? So just been playing about with the mill and I've made this little um, clamping plate for underneath the tail stock because yeah, I'm not using a wooden one. <laughs> it's real quick and dirty, it don't need to be precision or any of that lot. It just needs to be hoofing and strong and work and the right size. So that's what it is. Literally, it's just a chunk of metal, hole in the middle, and I've just milled out a couple of slots on either side. And essentially, this will sit underneath the ways on the bed. I've got corrected on that. The big heavy bit is the bed. The shiny bit on top is the ways. See, I'm learning. <laughs> so I think we'll be all right there. This has all had another coat of paint as well. I've still got to do the ways again. Sorry, the bed. <laughs> I will get it. Um, <coughs> so that'll have another coat of paint before I go. Because I'm going to have to chip off to me work in a minute. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dave and Callum, the two fellas that came and give us a hand shift in this in the first place, they've had a proper week of it. <laughs> first up, Dave, he got bought a lovely new present by his missus. Have a look at this. He's got a road ready trumpet to go playing on, which is mega. Officially makes her the best missus on the planet. Um, Callum, yeah, Callum got one of these. That's Leighton. That's his, he's a dad. First time round, but he's a dad. So he's probably grinning like an idiot, but apparently mum and Junior's all doing well. So congratulations, matey. Nice one. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,
One thing I am slightly concerned about is how close we are to the shop blaster. This is the only place I can put it, end of. And really, that's the only place that that can go unless I chop a big chunk off the desk and move it to the other end, but then I'll have to find somewhere else for Brenda to go. Brenda the bender. Um, and I have been shop blasting and I just wanted to see sort of how it would come up and what it would look like and all that sort of, yeah, how much dust actually gets generated. Um, now, the new filtration system that I shoved in, that Cyclone, works an absolute treat. It really is good. However, we do still get a little bit of dust. And bear in mind, I'll probably put four or five hours shot blasting whilst this cabinet and stuff, you know, being around. Um, and there is like a very thin layer of dust, but ultimately once this is all pucker and everything else, I don't want any grinding dust to get on these these ways at all, because that will completely cock it up. So we're going to have to get some sort of cover. Um, hmm, could be interesting. There was a suggestion of sticking sticking the shock blaster on a trolley on wheels. So I can take it out and you know when I'm going to use the lathe. However, with a bike lift there and tool kits and you know welding tables and all the rest of it, it's just not practical. It has to stay there. So I'm probably some of this um, fire blanket that I've got. It's real thick, heavy duty stuff. Um, guard against sparks and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just going to get a cover done up, which goes right down to the floor and just covers the whole thing. I reckon that's going to be the way to do it. Tony again. Ah, my new drive belt. Let me get the old one to show you. This, this is the drive belt that goes up to the headstock. It's called a Brammer belt, apparently. You can see it's a really weird looking thing. There's like three overlapping links that are kind of riveted together. And each of these links has got a slot and then a hole. Apparently the, these can be a bit of a paint put on. You need a set of pliers really that you can stick in the hole and as you squeeze it they open up so you can get the, the pins through and stuff. This is the new replacement for it. It's very slightly different. Um, I got mine from lays.co.uk from Tony and it's the new T-Link belt or something. 
Um, essentially the same sort of thing. It's not made out of the same leather that that is. This is some sort of plastic rubber, what, well, I don't know. Um, but it's the, the links are now T's and they're not slotted, you know, in, in, in the actual links. So apparently these are a lot easier to add links, take links out, basically put on. You, you kind of turn that T piece round, shove it through the hole when it's all lined up and then just turn it with a set of pliers and that's it, it's all locked in place. So happy days, it'll be going on soon enough. Right, so just giving these a little coat of paint. It's the second coat. Slapped it on with a brush. I ain't bothered. Um, everything sits on the bed on this machine. So as far as leveling it out and everything else, as long as everything is true to the to the ways, then we're in. We're sorted. Um, somebody did drop a comment about, oh, make sure you level it. <laughs> well, I know it's kind of good practice, and I've got it near enough level. The floor ain't that bad. Neither's the cabinet. But is it, is it absolutely dead nuts on? No, it ain't. Is it gonna be? No, it ain't. <laughs> Ask a Navy engineer if the lathe on his battleship works quite happily and he'll tell you yes. It don't have to be. As long as everything from the ways upwards is, the rest of it is just kind of good practice. Um, so it's level-ish, but that's gonna do. <laughs> so tail stock is all back together again. That was a bit of a faff trying to get that together. The tolerances it on are so, so, so snug and tight. Um, and I've covered everything just in like three and one oil. Some of that stuff, just as I've been putting it back together again. Uh, this is the last bit that I need to be painted and then that can all go back on that. And I can start building a lathe instead of pulling it all apart, which will be a good thing because I've got no desk space. <laughs> I've got nothing. Um, all this stuff just takes up so much room. So anyway, I'm back here again at the weekend. There's going to be another video at the weekend because I'm doing this because guess who's not here again? <laughs> I'm going to get a t-shirt done. Where's Steve at? Um, so I'm going to carry on with this until he's back down again and we can sort the stuff out on his bike. Apparently he has got some odds and sods for it. He's got the alley for the foot peg mounting jobbies and all that sort of so we can get on with stuff once he's here but I need him here <laughs> gotta turn up um, so anyway once I get all this lot back on the lathe then I'm gonna have a crack at the thread cutting gear box just because it's the next logical thing to go on and he's huge it just takes up so much space and I need space so that's what I'm doing <laughs> anyway not a massively long one but we, you know, it's sort of taking shape, it's getting there. I'm quite liking it. So anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. And we'll see you again next time. Laters.